Happy Tuesday, everyone. It's Kelly here from Kelly Chassis Fine Arts. So who has heard of the Marie method? Well, if you haven't heard of her, she is a author and her name is Marie Kondo. She has two books out now. I think they've been out for about three years now. One called Tidying Up and the other one calling uh, called spark joy and i bought both of these on amazon in january because i really wanted to you know find a way to tidy up my home as an artist because we all know as artists we are crazy when it comes to all of our products that we use so i figured if i could um, read this book it might help me a little bit but i have to say i am totally on board this method is amazing and I have to share it with you. And of course we have a little project for you at the end so make sure you watch all the way through. Stick around and I will give you the details and show you my space. As I mentioned I do have full online classes you can find them over there at my website at kellylynnart.com where I have over 2,500 students in 85 different countries and over 24 online classes that have lifetime access. So head over there and check those out. I hope you look in the wrong spot. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I have new videos every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you click that subscribe button and click the little bell and you'll never miss one. So if you are new to my YouTube channel, hello and welcome. So glad to have you here. And if you have been following me for a long time, you know that I am a main artist. I am all into simple living. We're debt free. And finding the KonMari method, it was right up my alley. So I wanted to share with you my results. So during all this time off after the holidays, I've been watching Netflix and I came across uh, a new show called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up with Marie Kondo, who is an, an author. And she published this book back in 2014 called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. And it's been like a huge success. She came out with a second book uh, called Spark Joy. And it's all about basically taking care of your stuff and only having things that really bring you lots of joy and getting rid of all the stuff that you have that doesn't. And that's the, the basis of this whole thing. So I have been going through my house now for about a week and I have, I started with clothing. And if you, if you watch the episode and or read the book, you, she'll tell you everything you need to do and what order you do it in. But you start with your clothing, then you move to books and then you go to, um, papers and the miscellaneous stuff. And so I, I did my bathroom, I did my kitchen, um, and I left my art supplies to last because those are more sentimental. Even though I had pretty much, you know, cleaned things up, um, I still had a lot of things that I did know I didn't use anymore. And uh, things, you know, I had duplicates of and things that were almost empty and, you know, I couldn't part with them. So um, I went through my entire house, as I said, and then I went to my art supplies. So this is just some pictures of my house. I have pretty much gone through everything now. And my big thing is like my tulips and my candle. I have my beautiful view outside of the lake house and I have my down comforter that I use every night. So I keep those things out now. I found these rocks that I absolutely loved that were hidden in all of my art supplies. I'd used them for resin a while back and I loved them. So I put them in my plants. So for my art supplies, what I did was I have my upstairs area. This is where I have my computer. This is where I do all my video work. This is where I do any computer work, any shipping labels, um, my notebooks, printer, all of that stuff is here. Uh, as well as any of my files, my to-do list, my journals, um, you know, and I have a couple of pads of uh, watercolor paper here. So all my receipts are in here. And I also have, you know, my pens, my paper, my chargers, any little paperwork or things that go in with, with uh, products when I ship them. And then downstairs, I have all my supplies. So I have all my brushes. I've separated those out. And then I have decided that I've done my brushes separately. I've done my um, materials or my medium separate. So I have all my paints together now because I found I used more than one thing together, but 
so I, I had my, my watercolor separate from my alcohol inks, from my um, resin. I had everything separated. So now I just have all my paper goods together. So these are all my paper products. I have all my paints together. I have all my brushes together. So these are all my prints here. And with that, I have like my medium sized prints, my large prints, and these are my small prints. They're all in a little box, a little paper box that I use. So it's really easy to go through. And then I have um, my tape here in the front and then I have my mats on one side. So again, all my paper products are all together now, which just makes it so much easier. So these are all my eight by 10 mats. Then I have my larger 11 by 14 mats. And then I have my um, really small ones here uh, as well. So they're all together now. So if I need to find a mat or any paper products, I now know where to go instead of having things upstairs, downstairs, and everywhere. And then for paper, I have all my paper together. So my watercolor paper is here. My Yupo paper is here. Uh, canvas boards are here. So everything is in this little bucket and it's really accessible. All my tapes are in this drawer. And then this is all of my materials used for my framing. So again, I can just pull that drawer out and take it anywhere I want to go and I can easily frame my work. And there's more tape down here as well. And then in my drawers for my desk, I have all of my pencils. I have my ink pencils, uh, regular pencils. Over here I have my calligraphy, which I hope to do some more for you guys. A couple of papers, um, more pencils in this drawer. So all of my writing materials are together. So, um, so that's how I did it. So hopefully that helps you. And then what I decided to do, since I did these little uh, little containers um, for my paintbrushes, I was trying to figure out where to put them. So I picked up a just, or actually I started saving my cans from you know beans and for my tomatoes because in the Comrie method, she says you can pretty much store things in anything um, as long as you make it pretty. So what I decided to do was for you guys, I. I'm making these little covers for the metal cans just because I want them to be pretty. <laughs> so I'm going to take my alcohol ink. I have some Yupo paper here and I'm just going to play. So this is a great little, very inexpensive thing for you to do if you want to store your paintbrushes and make them pretty or still uh, store your pens. A couple weeks ago, uh, I did a video for you guys on uh, my storage for the shelf that I did, my alcohol ink shelf, and for my pens. So I'll link that for you up here in the right hand corner if you want to take a look at that if you missed that. And it has all of these uh, lovely containers that I use to hold my paints and um, my pens in. So here I am, I've got my pinata alcohol inks and I'm using the Twilight Purple or Passion Purple. I can't remember what it's called. The purple. <laughs> And I have my watercolor brush pen. And you probably see me use these before as well. If not, I'll put a link for the video on that as well. It's filled with isopropyl alcohol. And I'm just blending some of this and lightening some of those shades here and there. And that, that purple is really dark. I'm doing this at night too, so the lighting is not the best. So I apologize for that. So yeah, I think I'm gonna grab a big brush and some gold paint here and drop a little of that in there. Can never have enough gold in my opinion. So I'm doing a dry brush now. This paint brush doesn't have anything on it. I'm just basically dragging that across the paints and I'm getting a little bit there. It's still a little bit wet. It dried really quick. I'm, I'm amazed at how fast this is drying. Of course, it's quite warm in here as so I have the wood stove going and I do have my window open. I just want to create a little texture, have a little fun with it. I think now I'm going to add a little bit of green to this. So I'm going to put down below for you, if you're new to alcohol inks, what I'm using. This is the Pinata brand and I'm using it on Yupo paper, which is a polypropylene paper. So it's very smooth surface, slick surface, and it works great with alcohol inks. And 
this is just I'm just having fun with this. I, I we're just putting little lines in here, so you can make yours with any colors you want, and you could cover pretty much any size jar that you want. Yeah, that green's pretty. I'll just dry brush this as well, just creating some texture, just having a little playtime here this evening. See if I can get that to move a little bit more. I think I'm going to grab some of the blending solution and see if I can blend this just a little bit because it's quite dry. I do like that dry brush technique though. I think I want to spread this out just a little bit more. So I'm going to put a little bit of that uh, extender in here. It's kind of like a blending solution, but doesn't have quite the smell as uh, like alcohol would have the 91% alcohol. And let's see if I can get that to move a little bit. Yeah, that's that's extending it a little bit more. Creating a little movement on the paper here. So next I'm going to get out my gold pen, my Krylon pen. And I, you know how I love little butterfly. My little logo is butterfly, so I'm going to make this. Well, I don't know if it's a flower or a butterfly, but <laughs> it's some type of little pattern that I've decided I'm going to make. I'm trying to get my pen to go here. There we go. So I'm just going to make a few of these in along here. Maybe add a few dots to it. And then I'm going to grab my white Posca pen next and just add a few little more squiggles to this. I've got a lot of textures going on here now. I'm sure that's going. You'll notice I have to push on the pen just to get the ink flowing again. They're like paint sticks. And let's throw some dots in here. How about some tic-tac-toe signs? <laughs> I love tic-tac-toe. <laughs> I don't know. I could make this more girlish, I guess, with a few more little flowers and things like that. But it's going in the middle of the house, and I like to make it more neutral. That way my husband doesn't think it's too girlish looking in the living room. Is that bad? He really wouldn't care. <laughs> I'll throw some more dots on here. I'm just playing and having fun. We'll see how this turns out. Let's make a nice background too, huh? That's pretty much what it's going to be. Is the background is going to go on the can. <laughs> so I want to let you guys know I have a new class that's about to be published as well. It's uh, finally the resin pendant class. I have been working on this one since last fall and I finally got it all together. Um, I kind of put it off on hold there during the holiday season so I could get some of the holiday ones out and some of the snow seas scenes. So if you um, again are new here and you want to try some watercolor classes, I put up three uh, snow or snow scenes basically um, of watercolor. One was the snowy tree scene with a salt background. The second one was a holly berry with snow. And then the third one was a red cardinal in the snow. So you can go ahead and check those out. I'll put the links down below for you on that. I, I will be putting out the intro for that probably midweek as soon as I have everything wrapped up and get the intro video done and and the materials, but we're almost there. So look for that coming up soon. It will, probably won't be a Tuesday video. It'll just be a regular ad. So you'll see it if you make sure you click that little bell and you subscribe to um, the channel here and click the bell. You will uh, get notified when that comes out. So I think that's pretty good. I think I'm done. And, and now we're going to let that dry for a little bit. And then I'm going to take my can and try to measure this up a little bit. And we're gonna glue this to the can. 
Well, I think that's pretty dry. We're gonna give it a shot here. So I have my can. I'm gonna start it off here on the side. I'm gonna make a little notation on the can itself here so I can make sure that I have enough room. I'm rolling. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna start the can right here so I can get the measurement on the top. And I'm just putting a little dot on the side of the bottom of the can here. And as I roll this, all the way around till that dot hits again. And then I can mark the end of it right here. So that's how big of a piece I need. <laughs> I'm not much for measuring, as you can tell. I'm, a, I'm an eyeballer. <laughs> I do that awful too. When I hang up my art, oh, I drive my husband crazy because he's the guy that will bring out the leveler and bring out the stud, stud finder, all that fun stuff. And then there's me. I'll just put a nail there. It looks about right. <laughs> Oh, I'm so bad. All right, so some scissors. Let's cut that. I'm just going to go all the way up with this one. And then cut across the bottom here where I have that other mark for the height. Just make sure I get it on this side as well so I can try attempt to be straight here. My cans are rolling, man. All right, right there. We'll cut that across. Okay, and then we're going to set that aside. I'm going to do another one, I think, a little bit larger afterward. So there's our piece, and we're going to glue that right to our can. So I have just some Elmer's glue here. I'm going to wrap that around, and then I'm going to tie it up with a rubber band. And that way I will let it dry on there. So we're just gonna basically roll it right along. So I hope you enjoyed this little video. Hope you can do a little bit of Con Marie yourself and try out the project. If you like this, please make sure to click that like and share button and we will see you guys next Tuesday. Have a great week.